Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. We're going to be talking about visitation. We want, we want the visitation of the Holy Spirit. We want the manifestation of the Spirit. And we want the demonstration of the Spirit in order for us to be more effective in reaching people, growing the church, building the kingdom of God, doing God's will on the earth. Amen? And so that requires um, uh, us being sensitive to the Spirit. And so we're going to be teaching on Sundays. We're going to be teaching on the Holy Spirit, the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Um, but tonight we just kind of want to establish the focus for the year. Okay? Now again, this is not, you know, just some, what's the word for 2015? This is not a word for 2015 as such in that, you know, God spoke and gave us a word and, you know, uh, in 2015 we'll have, you know, I don't know, whatever you can get to rhyme with 15. You know, you, where you, get, you get 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, you can come up with some saying for all those years, the same word. You know, because it rhymes. You know, we like, we like that, you know. More in 04 and, you know, and more in 24 and more in, you know, um, uh, yeah, I'll be with the 03, you know, or whatever we come up with. Um, but, you know, when you get to the teens, you can just go right on and have the same word year after year. Lord said, you know, and, and I don't, I'm not saying God doesn't do that, but, you know, we're just not trying to find that word. We're not trying to come up with a word and say, oh, yeah, this is good, because it sounds good, it's, it's catchy. Um, we believe that this is going to be a purposeful event. In other words, it's not that God has said, this, I'm going to be, you know, visitation, manifestation, demonstration, and you, you guys just hear, here it comes. Um, there are things we're going to have to do in order to, we're on purpose, going to, is this word I'm going to use, entreat the Lord. Look with me, if you will, into uh, Zechariah chapter 8, uh, verse 21. And again, now, we'll read it out of the King Jimmy. Hallelujah. And it says, And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us uh, speedily go speedily before the Lord, and to seek the Lord of hosts, I will go also. Now the NIV says, And the inhabitants of one city will go to another and say, Let us at, go at once to entreat the Lord, and seek the Lord Almighty, I myself am going. And I believe that if we're going to be um, in a position for the Lord to visit us, now, you know, understand that the Lord is always with us. But there are special visitations or uh, manifestations of the Lord that do take place because people seek after him. Uh, we know in the book of Acts. You, you say, well, you got all the Holy Ghost you're ever going to get. Well, in the book of Acts, uh, after they got filled with the Holy Ghost, they went and got to pray and got in one accord, and then the Lord would shake the place. Um, and, you know, or they would get filled again. So we know that there are... Um, other special endowments or visitations of the Lord that take place in the Bible outside of being born again and filled with the Spirit. Um, the, the, and that comes, if we saw in the book of Acts, as they began to seek the Lord and get into one accord. Here, Zechariah says in the NIV again, uh, let us entreat the Lord. In other words, we have to, as a body, as, as, in, as individuals within the body and the body, set ourselves to seek after God as never before. Now, 2014 was a, was a weird year. Um, I know that we're not, you know, that God's not as, as moved by dates and times on calendars as we are. Um, we we kind of we kind of like to set things up and go, you know, um, is the Lord um, uh, is the Lord, you know, going to do something in 2014 or is it going to wait 2015? Well, you know, God would do it in 2014 if we would. Get, but we get caught up in times. And, and the, problem, the problem with that is there's things going on in life, and we get on timetables, and, and we begin to set time elements for God to work in. And, uh, and we, we all, a lot of times we get to looking forward to a different calendar year and get our faith out there, and then all of a sudden God does something because we put our faith out there. And it was because we put our faith out there, not because God was any different. Can you say Amen. All right, so what we're going to do is in 2015, we're going to set our focus, everybody say our focus, on entreating the Lord, seeking after the Lord, setting our heart to pursue the Lord, His Spirit, amen, and to 
make ourselves available to him in order for the work and purposes of God to be made manifest. Hallelujah. Uh, Joe, if you, want to, if you want to kind of sit out there, you can still hear me and um, be the watchman, you know, in case other folks are going to show up. Um, Hallelujah. Well, we're glad, we're glad, you know, we've had, we've had a few just short in the last five minutes, so we're glad y'all are here. Hallelujah. You're, 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 we're, just, we're glad you're here. Amen. And, uh, but we're talking about 2015, the year, we're, we're calling it the year of visitation, manifestation, and demonstration. We're setting our focus to entreat the Lord to visit us, to manifest himself, and to demonstrate himself by the Spirit in us, through us, so we fulfill his purpose and plan for our lives, for the life and the plan of this church. Amen? Hallelujah. Again, not a catchy phrase. You know, it's not the, it's not the you know, I got a word for the body of Christ. This is the year of, you know, your, out, your, your quadruple outpouring with the double anointing and the, you know, you know, the overflowing buckets of oil. You know, this is not, I don't have that word. I have, we have a, we have a focus for us. Okay? And um, are y'all, y'all cool with that? All right. Um, a lot of people are like, what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? You know, God always, there's some things that God always has a word for. Go ye. <laughs> yeah, you don't need a special year of the go ye. You got, he's got the, the go ye's every year. Amen. So, all right. So, Zachari- again, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 21, and the inhabitants of one city will go to another and say, let us go up at once to entreat the Lord to seek the Lord Almighty, I myself am going. We want to entreat the Lord. We want to get our focus. Uh, there's been a lot going on in the natural, all over the world, Islam, in our political scenes. There's all kinds of stuff that's been going on that's gotten people sidetracked. And they've gotten so sidetracked with the affairs of life that we have ter- we've gotten away from entreating the Lord. And so what happens when you do that is you begin, you begin to start to handle things in the flesh instead of in the spirit. We want to get back to handling things in the spirit. Praying out and getting things done by the Holy Ghost. That doesn't mean you don't go to work. That doesn't mean you don't make wise decisions. That doesn't mean you don't do the right things you're supposed to do. But, you know, you, listen, you know, ain't none of your flesh going to fix our political situation. All right, it ain't gonna fix it. Ain't gonna fix the uh, the Islamic stuff, you know. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to believe God for you know. There, there's been stuff going on all over the place, and we we got sidetracked. We gotta get back to entreating the Lord. Men and women don't need another um, pseudo gospel, pseudo church, pseudo anything. They need the power of God that will ra- radically change their life. Amen? One of the things it said about the apostles in the New Testament is that those that have come, turned the world upside down have come hither. They had something going on. They were turning the world upside down. Amen? Amen? And we got to get back to believing we got something that turns the world upside down. Don't know about you, but I believe we got something that will do it. Amen? And it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. So first, so let's, let's leave here. Uh, we're going to entreat the Lord, meaning we're going to set ourselves aside to seek after God, to be pursuant of God, to be pursuant of, of the things of God. Now remember, when we're talking about God, there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Of the three persons of the Godhead, which one is actively in operation in the earth today? Think about it now. The Father is, in, is at the throne. Jesus is at his right hand. What's Jesus' ministry? Jesus' ministry is not coming down to the earth and doing anything. Amen. He is seated at the right hand of the Father where he ever liveth to make intercession for us. Amen. He's praying for the church. Amen. Well, who's here? I will send another paracletos, this another after the same manner as myself, and he will, guide, he will lead and guide you into all truth. It is the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, who is in operation in the church in the earth today. We worship the Father. We worship the Son. We're submitted to the Lordship of the Son. Amen. 
and we are, we are brought nigh as children unto the Father through Jesus Christ, but it is the Holy Spirit that we are entreating to work in our, in our lives and in, in, in our ministries in order to reach people. It is the Spirit of God who strives with man to bring him to Jesus Christ. My spirit will not always strive with this, but he said in the New Testament. Amen? Amen? So it is the Holy Spirit that we're going to need in operation with. And so we've got, the, as we said uh, last past Sunday, and we did it, it was pretty short, and, and I apologize. I woke up, man, my voice had, had abated me. I, I was kind of boom. Uh, I hadn't planned. I, I, I felt kind of yucky on Saturday, but my voice was, I didn't, I didn't know my voice was going to do that. It just <laughs> went, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> anyway. Hallelujah. I feel much better today. It kind of, it just kind of caught me off guard. That's all, you know, so, you know, you can get busy. Anybody been too busy and you're kind of busy and forget to take care of yourself? We've all done that, haven't we? I, I did the same thing. I got, I've been so busy and, and taking care of other things, I didn't take care of myself. And, uh, you know, so I put my, put my feet where my head was two seconds before. Amen. You can tell I feel better, don't catch you. I know I look better. I look, I look rough Sunday night. <clears throat> Amen. And Monday morning I got looked even worse. Looked in the mirror and thought, my God, go back to bed, son. Cover up. You just look bad. <laughs> you only need to look in the mirror. That, that's a bad image. <laughs> I mess up your confession. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But we got, we got back after. We started praying. We got, got to pray and say thank you for the food. Thank you. Take sickness out of our midst. Amen. And he does. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we're going to entreat the Lord. Now, we're going to treat him for visitations. 1 Peter 2.12 says, Having your conversation, or lifestyle, honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Now, this, now listen. Now, there's a lot of people who are out against the church right now. Everything going on in the world of media, of social media, of printed media, movies. And I just read one of the, I read an a, uh, article uh, yesterday by a uh, P PhD in Hebrew studies on the movie Exodus. She blistered it. It wasn't just some, you know, Christian magazine who, you know, that didn't like a little bit of this. She annihilated it for its horrid and, and it horrid presentation and she said even if you took away all the stuff where they were inaccurate in the Bible it's still a waste of money it was just a horrible movie Christians you know and the Christians you got no business supporting junk amen you just really don't when it, the, the deliberate Moses did not uh, he was Moses, Moses in the movie is an atheist until he falls down has brain damage and then starts hearing the voice of a boy god like hallucinating, you know. So it's it's just it's just horrible. Um, and it did, it's, it's second week out, it was it, it plummeted. It would because it's it's just it's just junk. The morals against Christians, but God brings visitations. This is why the church has to be ready, and not with a pseudo gospel, not with a happy clappy slap you on the back. Come come and join our this group. We got to have a church that has a not not just the message, but the reality of the that by their good works they may behold what? Amen? They may behold the, the glory of God in his day of visitation. God wants us ready as we entreat him as he visits that we can that we can um, present the gospel in a way that we're living it. Amen. That we're not just like the world. That we're not sitting out in the pub acting like the world, you know, saying I can do this and I can do that. Listen, the world has already got alcohol. They don't need Christians who can drink and be cool with them. They don't need Christians who can, who can uh, sin with them. They need somebody, they need a group of people who by their good works are demonstrating the reality and the, of the existence of a transforming God that as he visits their lives through the workings of the church, there's, a, there's something there that's real. Amen. 
We, we have got to have a church that comes out. For, you know, the word of God says this, come ye out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And we have taken things like, that are really out of context, Paul said, I'm all, all to all men, I'm all things. He did not say, now he wasn't saying that, you know, to the fornicator, he was a fornicator. Okay? That's not what you go, you, go, you have to study things a little more in context, a little more depth. Than, than, you know, the, to the prostitute, he was a prostitute. That's the, to the drug addict, he was a drug addict. That's not what he was saying. He wasn't saying, be like the world to win the world. Can I ask, can I, can I say something? Why do they want to be, follow you who you say your answer is being like them? Because they're already miserable where they are. We're supposed to go give an answer to get out of that mess. <coughs> now, not condemn them. You know, you dirty, rotten dog sinner, you're going to hell if you keep doing that. That's not what we're talking about. But I'm not going. I don't need to go down there and lie down with them and sit there with them and drink up and shoot up or whatever else up, you know, and say, "Hey, I'm cool like you, but I'm going to heaven." The word says, "Be holy, even as I am holy." If we want visitations from God, we're going to have to walk with God and entreat God and create. Sister Wilkerson said this. Um, Lord, I wish I had, had marked the tape. I've got it somewhere. It would, just take, it would probably take me, I don't know how long it would take me to find it. But it's an old tape in one of Brother Hagin's meetings where Sister Wilkerson was prophesying. And she said this. She said, atmosphere calleth me. And she was, Brother Hagin recognized her as a prophetess. And of all, he, he said he's, and honestly, he, I, I can't remember the number he said, but he said, of, you know, he only, re, he only really knew of a, you know, like a handful of people that he really considered true prophets during, his, during that time. She was one of them. And, and she began to prophesy. And, you know, she, how many of you have ever heard Billy Brim? You know, when she, Billy Brim does her end, you know, that little thing. Well, she got that from being around Sister Wilkerson. You know, sometimes you can get things, even little uh, uh, ticks can get off on you by hanging around ministries, you know, that there, there's something about their spirit can get, up and get off on you. Um, some of the flamboyancy of Benny Hinn, got, he got that from me around Catherine Kuhlman. So he, he, he worked with Catherine Kuhlman. That, some of her, 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 her eclectic ways kind of got off of him a little bit. It's, just, it's, it's, it's not like you deliberately do it, but you, you sit around that and you get around. I, I, I remember years ago, uh, Mark Brzee, he'd been here a, number, a few times, and, and uh, Mark uh, be teaching, and he'd get up to a certain place in the spirit, and all of a sudden he'd be, he, he'd be kind of holding his hand, not, and then wasn't deliberate, holding his hand and kind of leaned over a little bit like about Dad Hagen, or he, you catch him with his hands down like this, twiddling the thumbs, and it, <clears throat> it wasn't deliberate imitation. It was just because you've been around him. Sister Wilkerson prophesied like that. And the glory. I, talk, I talked to her one time on the phone before she passed away, and such a sweet woman. Just, just a blessing of God, and just, just walked with God. She said this, she prophesied on this tape. She said, atmosphere calleth me. And here's what she said after that. Whether good or evil, it calleth me. What was it called? It was calling for God to respond to the atmosphere. Say, Wow. Say it backwards. Wow. Say it upside down. Wow. All right, there you go. You got it. <laughs> wow, wow, and mom. All right. You see, when we entreat the Lord for his visitation, we can bring the gloriousness of God by the atmosphere we establish in our entreaty for him. We, so now you got some folks going here just saying, no matter what you're doing, God's going to come in his goodness and glory. And I, I beg you to just maybe read your Bible a little bit better. How many think Ananias and Sapphira got the grace of God? <laughs> now think about it now. That was New Testament church. And Peter's sitting up there, 
And, and he said this. When they came, when the first one came in, well, Ananias came in, he said, why have you purposed in your heart, I'm kind of paraphrasing a little bit, but he said, purposed in your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. And he gave up the ghost. And a space about three hours later, his wife came in. Did you sell this land for as much? Yes. Why is it that you, you purpose together with your husband to do this? The same feet that took your husband out going to take you out. And she fell over and gave up the ghost. Atmosphere calleth him. Whether good or evil. I think we've been in the church. We have not separated ourselves enough to set in the right atmosphere. And see, things have gone rampant. Things have gone haywire because the church has gotten busy playing games and trying to get, um, get numbers and worldly success and they'll do anything to get it instead of creating the atmosphere where God will visit in his glory. I'm going to make a statement. I believe one reason that we haven't seen more of the glory of God in some of our churches is because the glory of God would do like the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament if he showed up and all that manifestation because the church isn't right it would clean house I don't believe that well tough don't you know that the word of God says concerning the things written about Israel in the book of Hebrews they were written unto us as our in now the King James uses the word in samples it basically trans out meaning the same thing as an example as a, as, as, a, as so us to look back at. Now, if the Bible says it's written to you as an example, that means that it's telling you don't follow the same pattern they followed if you, want the, if you don't want the same results. Now, when Israel followed after God, the blessings of God came. That's an example to us. When they turned after other gods, when they went whoring after other gods, when they went after, you know, a, a, a different, you know, it's amazing how many times that, you know, false gods came, the devil sent uh, uh, spies in, sent Trojan horses in, but, so to speak, into the camp and to deceive the people, and they would follow after those things and bring misery and destruction on them. They're told not to steal and take anything. One family took one thing and buried it in their tent. And I mean, the, I mean, God's judgment came. The whole family died because of it. God don't care about obedience. Isn't that amazing that one of the most poignant statements throughout the entire Testament is, it is better to obey than to sacrifice. Remember when Samuel came in and King Saul came to him? He was all excited. I've done exactly what you said to do. Well, what was that bleeding I heard out there? Well, the people wanted to keep some of the sheep. And what's the king over there doing? He's supposed to be dead. Well, you know, but what King Saul wanted to keep him alive because he was hoping to get some financial gain out of him. See, we begin to justify stuff. Think about it now. How many times does accumulation of wealth deter us from entreating the Lord in the proper way so he can do what he wants to do? Hello? I mean, you had one woman run the whole, whole bunch off. Jezebel. Dear Lord. So we want, we want to treat him for a visitation, which means we want to set an atmosphere where the freedom of God to do as he desires in our midst. Oh, how we, we, we've got to get back to having a hunger for those things. We're not trying to get a hold of the Holy Ghost. Are you here? You don't get the Holy Ghost. And we, we use it. We Pentecostal. I grew up classical Pentecostal. And we would say things like, I got the baptism. I got the Holy Ghost. 
And, and no, you didn't get the Holy Ghost and you didn't get the baptism. You were filled with the Spirit. Meaning, He got you. Are you here? He got a hold of you. And Jesus told them, don't go anywhere until you're being due with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Meaning that until he has you fully surrendered, you're not even useful. So we're going to entreat for a visitation. Oh, we want the visitations of the Lord. Because in Our mindset has to be readjusted. Because it's not about getting him and it making me successful and powerful. See, we miss things. God wants to make us successful. God wants to endue us with power so we can be witnesses to win the loss. It's not about you being the superstar of the body of Christ. Amen. And Christian television has probably done more damage along those lines than anything else. Because they market that. Because it gets ratings. And ratings get... Just like guy came here one time. He had some miracle and then that's time to take up an offering. Not here in our church, but in, in the city. You just merchandise the gospel. Had a miracle, it's time, good time to take up an offering. And you wonder why the hand of the Lord gets drawn back. So we're going to treat for visitation. And then, then in that visitation, we want the manifestation. First, uh, First Corinthians 12, 7 says this, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man the profit with all. Now, w in order to have manifestations of the Spirit, the right attitude has to be, it is to profit with all. It's, it's for the profit of the body. It is not to make you somebody. I mean, I knew people. I've known people. Listen, I've been, I've been in this for, for decades. And there are people who almost could print business cards because they prophesied in church. They're a prophet of God. Or every week they got to have a word. I believe in the gifts and manifestations of the Spirit. I believe that they're ordained, ordained of God for the body of Christ. That they're for the entire church age and they did not pass away the day the last apostle died because the Holy Ghost is still here. I believe they're to operate and work in the church to profit in the, the church in helping the church grow and develop and to helping it reach the lost. But I do not believe it is so that you can be the local church superstar because you prophesy every week. Our attitude has to be about why we are here and what we are supposed to be doing. And that if the Spirit of God is going to manifest, it's not so we got a new toy and we can run around and talk about, Woo! look what the Holy Ghost did. Amen. We can stand back and be in awe of what the Holy Ghost has done. That he would manifest himself in such a special and precious way. We should be in awe of his workings and dealings. We should be have respect for the workings. Of, now I'm going to tell you something. Some of you, you know, some of you older people may remember this. You didn't even squirm in church if the Holy Spirit was in manifestation. Because grandma... Papa, mom, or daddy had a, had a flicker. And you'd get it right on the temple or right on the ear. Or they would reach over and grab your ear. You don't do that when the Holy Spirit's manifesting himself. I mean, they, they, and you say, well, that's, just, that's a overboard. And we went the other way. Oh, let's just jump up and down and, 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 and clap and shout because he, you know, he did something. 
And I think we've run the Holy Ghost off. When he wanted to do more, because we, you know, we dissipated that by getting in the flesh and responding to what he was doing in the, in, in the, in the spirit. There's times to rejoice. There's times to shout. There's times to run. If that's the manifestation of the Spirit. But think about him coming and ministering, healing the people. And you, you want to go all crazy because somebody was getting healed. And not knowing there's 25 other people he needs to minister to. And you start dissipating the anointing because you got over in the flesh about it. And say, oh, thank you, Spirit of God. For your gracious mercies. Ministering gifts of healings. So we're going to understand that the manifestation of the Spirit is for the prophet, to profit with all. To bring profit to the body and not exaltation of you. Can we say amen to that? Amen? I'll tell you one reason, because, you know, people look back, you know, and I, I don't care about the naysayers. Those people just... They, they, they just, they need to go home and, and write books to themselves. I really don't care what they had to say. But, you know, Dad Hagen, one of the reasons God used him the way he was used was his, was his humility. Now, he was bold in the spirit. He was bold with the word. But in person about the spirit, he was humble. God used him. There's things he didn't even want to do. He, he asked the Lord, don't, 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 don't. I don't want this. See, God, God can use people who don't want it. It's those who are going crazy for it that you've got to watch out for. They're, they're trying to get a hold of it. They, they want to be recognized. Manifestation of the Spirit. And last is the demonstration. If we will entreat the Spirit of God and set the atmosphere for Him to visit, and then in His visitations, as He wills and desires, He manifests, He will also demonstrate. And those demonstrations, remember the Lord, the Bible says this, they went everywhere preaching the word, the Lord working with them. Who's at work on the earth in the absence of the, of the risen Lord? The Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is who worked with them <coughs> on the behalf of the Lord. Remember Jesus said that, uh, that he would not speak of himself. But he'll tell you those things that I would bring to you. Remember what I've already shared with you. The Holy, so the Lord working with them, confirming the word with Signs following. Everybody say signs following. Demonstrations. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 4, and 5, he said, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Now why? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The Apostle Paul realized that he could not just convince people with smooth talk, slick talk, harmonetically correct sermons, catchy whatevers. There had to be something beyond. This. Don't get me wrong. It is good to have good Bible lessons. Okay? But even the Apostle Paul ran against somebody one day and he says, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Right. Almost. Almost persuaded ain't good enough. Right. Y'all remember that old country song, Almost Persuaded? Mm -mm. Let strange lips lead me home. <laughs> yeah, that's an old country song. And he was almost persuaded to let strange lips lead him home. Yeah, well, see, almost persuaded that, that, that didn't get him in trouble because he didn't go home with her. All right? You can't be almost persuaded to be a Christian. We can't be cute 
There needs to be demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. Not so we can think we got a hold of some power toy. We didn't, we, this is not some video game where you got to the next level and you get to choose the next power weapon on the battlefield. The Holy Spirit is not a toy. We are not trying to get him. We are inviting him and yielding to him to visit us and to manifest himself uh, among us and to demonstrate uh, really through us so we can touch the hearts of humanity not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that their faith doesn't stand in your slick talk in your greasy whatever message and you're watered down this or that. But they have an encounter with the true and the living God that radically transforms their life because they came in contact with the living God. Not with an energy field. We watched Star Wars. We watched one of the... Actually, we watched a couple of them last night. Shannon wanted to watch all six of them in a row. Well, you can't start at eight and get through all six in one night. You know, not unless you're taking, you know, double espressos every three hours. Um, but, you know, Zsa Zsa stuck his, his, his tongue into the power, right into the power coupling thing. They went, you know, his tongue all hanging out there. He can't move it or anything. You know, yeah. the Holy Ghost isn't something that we can just, we play around with. And we get a whole new power source. Now we're more powerful. Paul said something. He said, I rejoice in my weaknesses that the power of Christ, the anointed one, who's the anointed, who's the anointed one, anointed, the anointing, the Holy Ghost, <coughs> may rest upon me for when I'm weak, then am I strong. We find our spiritual strength in being yielded to his will, his purpose, his manifestations, and his using us as he wills. It is not so we can go around and go, give me $100. Give $100 on the offering. Run around the church. Start a revival. Now, the Spirit of God will use us in unique ways, as He wills. I, uh, I got a good friend, and uh, he worked for someone at one time and uh, said that, you know, he said he could go into a service one night, and uh, it, it frustrated because he said he, he could be in the anointing, and he could pick up a, a pitcher of water off the platform and go throw it on people, and everybody that got the water hit, got saved, healed, whatever they needed, they got. Come back out the next night, grab the thing, and they all got wet. Because it worked last night and got a big crowd, man, got them all stirred up, going to do it again tonight, and they just got wet. God might use you one way one time and never use you that way again. Amen. Now, I'll share, let me share something with you. I, I have yet to have anything like this happen again. And this happened um, girl, if you're going to sneeze, just go ahead and sneeze. I mean, go for it. Um, this is about 1980, I want to say 1983, 1984. I was, um, I was um, volunteer staff at our home church in Greenville. And, and I've told the story before, but I, I, I bear just telling again here because I want, I want to share something. I want you to see something. Remember, God may use you one way, he may not one way one time and never ever use you that way again. We have no other record of anybody being translocated after Philip was when he met with a eunuch in the desert. And we have no other record of that anywhere in the Bible. Doesn't mean God can't, doesn't mean God hasn't. We don't have any more records of Philip having that happen to him again. That, that may have and could very well have been the only time that ever happened. We cannot have an experience and then try to build that as a doctrine or a way of life that, that, that the only Spirit of God can determine. 
Because if you try to make the Holy Ghost do something, he won't do it. So, uh, I, I'm guessing somewhere in 1983, well, one of the local uh, independent churches, uh, now the pastor of that church was, a, was he was out of our denom the denomination I grew up in, but they had asked him to take that church for a season. It was a Pentecostal church, but it was independent. And, and the, the, the denomination granted him a, a time frame to, to do that for a season, uh, but then he had to make a decision either stay with the denomination or take that church. And he, he, he ended up staying with the denomination, uh, retirement and all that kind of stuff. You know how things go sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he called when we come minister um, uh, like four Wednesday nights in a row. Now, come to find out later what he was doing, he was trying me out for the assistant pastor. But he heard me sing, he needed a worship leader and an assistant pastor, and I said, I couldn't sing, he never offered me the job. And it didn't matter, I wouldn't have taken it anyway. Why wouldn't you have taken it? Because God put me where I was at at that time in that church. And, and, and I was not going to leave that church and go to another church in town for a position. So you have to follow God. You can't follow opportunity, you have to follow God. Opportunity does not equal God. It can, but you cannot, you can't equate an opportunity as God. You have to be led by the Spirit, not by opportunities. Now, you know, if you're, if you're young and you don't have anywhere to preach, somebody asks you to come preach, go preach. Okay? You know, that's, that's you know, I'm waiting on God to see if he wants me to go preach. Go preach. But something like we're offering you a job to leave a church and to go to another church and take a position in the same city. Right. Maybe if, I was, if it was three hours away, it may have been a different story. You know. Well, well why wouldn't you do it? I, because my relationship in, in the other church and my visibility in the other church could have hurt it by me going to another church in the same city. I could, people could have come over and followed me. Just because of their, you know, they like me on a personal level. People do, people do stuff, stuff all the time. I remember one time somebody came to me and said if I would start a church, they'd follow me. If I was at that church. I said, let me make it real simple for you. If I start a church, it'll be so far away from here, you can't follow me. I said, I will never hurt this church. I will not go start a church here and, and, and draw people out of this church. I'm not going to do it. I mean, people come and offering you. I'll come help you. I'll be there for you. Well, no, you won't, because I won't be close. All right, so back to this, you know. So it, they asked me to preach on four straight Wednesday nights. I said, okay. I went to my pastor and said, Can I, you know, they have asked me to come over and preach on the next four Wednesday nights. And, um, and uh, is it okay with you? Well, yeah, it's okay with me. All right, thank you. I'm going to go do that then, you know. And, and when you're young and you're, you know, you're working a full-time job, you're not, on, you're not on paid staff, but you're on volunteer staff at your church. Um, when you get opportunities to preach, you have to take extra time. See, when, when you're full-time, you you know, it's not that you don't prepare, but you, you stay more of an atmosphere of preparation. You, know, you have more time just to spend time with the Lord by yourself. And, and, and meditate on things and study things and you're not, you're not having to take extra time to get ready in the sense of uh, I've got this, you know, I've been working 40 hours a week and got a wife and you know, I got, you know you're having to stay up and get some extra study time and to get ready for the sermon, these four weeks of sermons. And uh, so one of those nights a couple of days in advance I'm, I'm praying about ministering on that Wednesday night and I had a mini vision. As Dad Hagen used to say, mini vision. M I N I. Mini vision. It flashed like this. Now, this church was set up like a lot of your smaller Pentecostal churches, and a lot of, well, a lot of churches. You know, they had built kind of a sanctuary building, which had two double doors that went out, but they never used them. Because they always used the Sunday school wing, came in through the Sunday school entrance, and came down the hall and through the side, the, the side door at the back of the sanctuary from the Sunday school wing. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay, never used the back doors. I mean, weddings and funerals. That was it. Okay, so, and I had this quick flash, and, I saw, and in that quick flash, I was up preaching. And this girl walked in from that side entrance of the, from the Sunday school wing into the back of the sanctuary. You know how they were, they were, the, they were the, right at the very past last row. 
They had two double doors there and went out into the, to the foyer, to the Sunday schools and the bathrooms and all that stuff. She came walking in there. She walked all the way across the sanctuary down to the last aisle. She came in about two rows and sat down on the end and sat there. And when she did, I saw me point to her and say, Sister, do you have the Holy Ghost? She said, no. I said, come up here, and I'll lay hands on you, and God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. She got up, came down, stood in front of me. I laid hands on her. She answered, they got filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Guess what? Wednesday night gets here. They turn the service over to me. I'm about five minutes into my sermon. And that girl, not, not just an image, that girl walked in. Walked across the back of the sanctuary. Came down two rows. I, 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 had, I got to stop the service. I said, two nights ago in prayer, I saw you. I said, do you have the whole, have you been baptized with the Holy Ghost? She said, no. I said, come up here and God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. She got up, came down, I laid hands on her. She got instantly filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. God's never used me that way again. I have never had an experience like that again. Why? I don't know. It's divided severally to every man as he wills. Now, I like to have that at every service. I like to have people walk in and go, yeah, God showed me and come on down here and boom. That'd be awesome. Let me tell you something you can't do. You can't fake it. You want to get yourself in trouble? Try to make that happen. Because it won't be God. Are you here? You go home. I had a mini vision. And I'm, I'm telling you, it almost freaked me out when I saw her walk in because it was the girl I saw in the vision. That, that just messed with you. Are you here? Exactly like I saw it happen. Sat in the same seat. Wouldn't that be cool? I said, wouldn't that be cool to have that happen every service? Or any time you just decide to do it, you know? Yeah. What am I, what am I saying that for? See, God uses, we have to be prepared to be used as God wants to use us. And to demonstrate through us the way God wants to demonstrate through us. And to keep a humble heart about it. And if he uses you one way, one time, your entire life or ministry, and that's the only time he ever does that, then rejoice in the fact that he, he, he decided to use you that day that way. And give him the glory because he gets the glory and the honor and the praise, not you anyway. Amen. Now, come to find out she'd been seeking for some time and hadn't been able to get filled. For, yeah, you know, we, we did some damage in the Pentecostal churches. I mean, we, we bang on them and shake them and shake their lips and try to make, take them, make them some version. I mean, you know, slap them this way and tell them to hang on, let go, shout hallelujah, shout praise the Lord. I remember one time I was in the altar in my church, in, in my Pentecostal church, and they had, they had an upright spinet, you know, what they call the upright spinets. And they opened the top up. It was just an upright piano. And they opened the top up, you know, and they down there, somebody, people come down and get filled with the Holy Spirit, and they're just banging on the piano. And they got people all around them, and I mean, they're banging on them. And I, you, you, one of you are going, hang on. You got somebody else in the other, going, they're going, let go. Sister Rumley had a hold of the jaw going, I mean, just, I mean, you know, you think, my God. And people get filled in spite of it, not because of it. Oh, praise the Lord. Now listen, they meant well. They did mean well. But I learned early, you can get people filled with the Spirit easy. Because you invite Him. You yield to Him. You're not, trying to get a, you're not trying to get tongues. You're trying to receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive. So we're going to have a year to entreat the Lord. Say entreat the Lord. To do what? To visit. To manifest. And to demonstrate. And we are going to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God and walk in a humility separating ourselves unto the things of God so he uses us as he wills to minister to people and we're going to keep a humble heart about it amen so we can bless people can you say amen 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 
Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Now, that doesn't mean God had never spoke to me about things in, the advance, in advance. But I've never had the vision. See, when I came to take this church, God spoke to me in February of that year and said that the, uh, um, we don't like to do this often, but, you know, the, uh, the pastor was dealing with some things physically. And um, I was praying about coming. And I, and, and I was supposed to come and enter, uh, fill in for that week. And I didn't because they, they, uh, he, he came back to preach. But the Lord spoke to me and said, he, he, he'll, he'll come home and you'll take that church. And he spoke that to me. He's having the vision. So when it happened, and I started coming as an interim, I didn't push anything. I didn't press anything. My God, I had, I had a word from the Lord. But see, I didn't have a vision. I didn't have a vision. He just spoke to me. So God still speaks. I just haven't had that other manifestation like that. A vision and me acting on that vision. You hear Dad Hagen talk about it several times. He had it numerous times in his ministry. Well, glory to God. We just love to have people come in the wheelchair and say, you see, it? Yeah. I already know what's going to happen. Three days in advance, I saw him get up out of the wheelchair and walk. But that'd be wonderful. It'd just be wonderful. What are you going to do if, he doesn't, if God doesn't do that? We're going to minister to him the word. We're going to lay hands on him according to the word of God. And we're going to keep going with, with what the word tells us to do. Amen. And we'll give him the glory all the way through. Amen. 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 If, he doesn't, if he doesn't use us in certain ways, then we just can't force it. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.